This is a follow-up part of my previous video about Spider-Verse effect in Blender. And stay tuned till the end I have a surprise for you. In the last video, I have discussed about creating the shaders and materials of Spider-Man for a still image render. I have researched more and found that maybe we can add cool looking shaders and materials on background objects as well, as you have seen in the trailer shots that background elements not just have comic dots they are have hand painted effects, artistic lines, chromatic aberration effects. For this video, I had created a 2 second animation, but we will only work on background objects and shaders of it. Last time I had used Blender Compositor, to create comic effects on background elements, but this time we work on their materials to achieve the effect, so it will give us more artistic freedom to customize every material. So I am going to break down the full process in simple steps. If you want to jump straight to shaders you can use timestamps. I know the animation which I had done is not that great but this video more focuses on the stylization not the animation. So, I'm gonna be using the same model which I had created for the first video. If you remembered I had rigged the model, so I can easily manipulate the poses, and add keyframes for the animation. I am really sorry I don't have any video footages or time lapse animating him, because at that time, I was in testing phase, and it came out nicely, so I decided to add background elements, and share with you all. I had animated him with pose to pose method, like he is swinging and then jumps to a building rooftop and pose like this, it took me a lot of time to animate it, but for the test shot, it looks okay. I had also added these smear effects, let's take an example of his leg, for this effect, I duplicated the Spider-Man, delete all shaped keys, and apply all the modifiers. I cut his all body parts except his leg. Set the origin to geometry, and try to position the leg as it was in the previous frame. I added some scale keyframes to show and disable this leg, like on one frame the scale is 0 and on next frame the scale is 1, and then next frame it again the scale value to 0. After animating the Spider-Man, I quickly see the references and made some background buildings with primitive shapes like cubes. I always see what placement of objects works best for the scene. I kinda like this placement, let's make some buildings now. First I will make this type of building. Let's add in mesh plane and rotate it, so that it faces the front. Scale it down, along the X axis. Go to the edit mode and add a loop cut with Ctrl R. Apply scale with Ctrl A and then scale. Now select both the faces, right click and select extrude individual faces, and then instantly hit enter to register the command, then go to this option and select individual faces, now scale down the faces and adjust the shape. Now select these borders and extrude them along Y axis. Like this. Now select the top faces and extrude them up. And then front faces and extrude them forward. Do this same to the bottom. Now add a material and call it border, and another material call it glass. In the glass material, go to the view port display option and change the color. Now select the glass faces and assign the material. Let's go to the back of the model, and delete these back faces. And select the whole loop of vertices, and move them back a bit. Now add another plane and rotate it, scale it, check to see if there is no gap between the plane and the window. Now select everything and join them with Ctrl J. Add another material, assign that to the plane, and name it building. And give some viewport color as well. Now just go to the modifiers tab and add a modifier called array, increase the count value, and add another array modifier and change the Y value to 1 and others to 0, and increase the value. Now you can see here's the front of the building. Now just duplicate this and add to all four sides. To flip the mesh, hit S, and hit the axis key in which direction you want to flip it, and hit minus 1 on numpad. After done the sides, I am adding some more details to the building, like adding a corner to it. Now when you are done, select each sides and apply all the modifiers, and then select everything and join the mesh. And then go to the edit mode, and select all the faces, and hit, M, 
and then distance, to merge the double vertices, which was created from the array modifier. From the same modeling method, I had modeled this building. Added a mesh plane, scale its correct shape, add some loop cuts, adjust them in their position, make more loop cuts for the windows. Select the window faces, extrude them inwards. Then separate them, by hitting P and selection. Assign them the glass material, and building material to the second mesh. Now model the window frames, by duplicating a face, place it position and extrude it to give thickness. Add an array modifier for the others. And then duplicate the objects to make all the frames. and then apply all modifiers in each object, and then join all the parts. Now same as before, duplicate it to make all the four sides. I also modeled the third building it looks like this, you can also duplicate the model and place it on the top and scale down a bit, to give some detailings. When you had done the modeling, you can replace all the primitive shapes with your building models, you can add additional details also like, top room, pedestrian elevated walkway, then you can add some more small details, like adding rooftop elements, adding staircase, adding some water tanks, some signal antennas, rooftop doors. First of all, let's create a universal comic shader for props. For this I will use this object. Select the object and create a new material, called Comic Diffuse Shader. We won't need a principal shader so delete it. Let's first add an image texture. You saw in the trailer that the props and objects have a hand-painted feel on them, we will be mimicking this by adding a hand-painted color texture. So import this texture, and let's preview it. Let's add a RGB curve to contrast the colors. To fix the tiling add the mapping and texture coordinate node. Take the UV coordinates, and increase the tile size. Arrange these, and add a mix RGB node here. Set the link to factor value. Make the top color to black, and bottom to white. Now black and white colors of the image are separated here, so I'm gonna add a RGB color node. Give a nice blue color and connect to the bottom white socket, and add a RGB curve again, link the color to it, and put it to the upper black socket. Now darken it, so that we get the texture of it. Now this is our color group, frame it by hitting shift P, and name it color. Now we will jump on the dot effects. Add this dot image texture, add mapping and texture coordinate nodes, and set it to window. Control click to preview the node. It works fine because we had used square resolution in our project. Let me know you that I had explained this in my previous video if you want to know deeper please watch that before. And yes when I will use this in animation scene, I will set the size according to the ratio. Let's decrease the size of it. Add a color amp node here. Set the black color to gray. And that's our dot texture group, frame it and name it. Now we will use it in a shader. For this I am adding a tune shader. Increase the smooth value. And assign the color to the color socket. Let's change the color again. To mix the dot texture, let's add a mix RGB node. Place it here, so that the color group assigned to the top socket, and we will plug the dot texture to the bottom socket. It's all over the place. Let's add the layer weight node, again. I had explained this in my previous video. Take the facing input and link to the factor value of the mix node. Now to see the results, we need to add color amp node, and contrast the colors. You can see the sides of the object start to show the dot texture, but it is too much. So I will be decrease the blend value. Now it's fine, 
set the mix color blend mode to overlay. Now one more step is left, take the output of our color group, and plug it to the size of the tune shader. Boom, you can see we have a cool looking stylized comic shader. Now this we can use within the variety of props, such as these water tanks, these rooftop door, or maybe in these staircase as well. Just select the new object, assign the comic shader, and click on this button to make it individual, and then change its color. Now I will jump on the building material. I had already assigned building material to the white area, and glass material to the windows. First let's start with building material. Add a material output. And add the same hand painted color texture here. To map it correctly, go to the edit mode and hit U and smart UV projection. Keep it in mind that you have applied the scale of the object. Now add both the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Scale the tiling. To color it, add a color mix node, and put the texture input to its bottom socket. Choose a color, and set the blend mode to overlay. And increase the factor value to 1. Now you can see we got the color. Let's frame it and name it. Now add the dot texture. Let me know that there is a shortcut method available, to add mapping and texture coordinate nodes, just select the image texture and hit Ctrl plus T. Let's preview the texture. This time I have to put it to UV. As you can see in the trailer or shots of the movie, that the dot textures on the buildings are not like they are only on the edges of the buildings. They are in patches. Some of them are here in dark colors, and some are here in bright color. We will add dot texture and blend with a mask texture like this, to give us a result like this. So we will be using the UV coordinates this time, because as you can see the dots are not stuck to the camera here, they are moving with the building. Now back to the shader, let's decrease the scale value. Now duplicate this whole group for the mask texture, replace the bottom image texture to the mask which looks like this. Add a color mix node. Take the dots input and link it to the factor value, and take the mask input and link that to the bottom socket. Make the color to black. Let's change the tile scale for the mask texture. Now you can see the dots are shown in patches. Let's frame it and call it dots texture. Now add a tune shader and plug the color input. Increase the size value. And smooth value. To mix the dots texture, let's add a color mix node. Plug the color into the top slot, and result of the mix node to the color socket of the tune shader. And now dots texture to the bottom. And set the blend mode to overlay. Increase the factor value to 1. Now it turned dark, and only dots are visible, which I do not want, so we will add a color amp node here. And flip the colors. Set the white color to 50% gray, because 50% gray would not affect anything under overlay mode. We need to only darken the dots. As I had mentioned before, that there are also some brighter dots. So I will rename this dot texture to dot texture black, and duplicate the whole group and place down, and rename it to dot texture white. And now duplicate this color mix node, and add the color amp on the bottom group as well, and plug that to the bottom of the mix node, and flip the color, set gray to white, and set the black to 50% gray. And now, just go to the dot white texture and offset the Z rotation a bit, now you can see the dark dots and bright dots. So this is the building material, it can be used in other buildings too, with different color, and different mask scale values. Now it's time for the glass material. Add the material output and principal shader, because I have to make the glass material glossy as well. So put the metallic value to full, and roughness very low. Now we'll make the color group, so add a RGB node here and set the color to a nice blue color. 
we will use lines pattern instead of dots this time. So at the bottom of it, add a image texture node and select the line texture. And call both of his friends. Preview the texture. This time we will use camera and rotate the lines by setting the Z rotation to minus 45. Let's add a color amp node and flip the colors and make the black color to 50% gray. Select this group and frame it and call it line texture. Now I will mix that with the color, so add a color mix node and take the input from the line texture and plug it to the top socket and color to the bottom socket. Set it to overlay with full factor value. Rearrange the node. I think I had done a mistake here. Take this white color of the color amp node and make it 50% gray and make the other one to darker gray. Now it's okay. But it's fully on the windows, which is not supposed to, so I will blend it with ambient occlusion node, so that it will appear only in the dark areas. So adding an ambient occlusion node, preview it, and add a color ramp node to contrast the colors and extracting the blacks more. On blacks we want the line texture and on the whites have the regular color. Duplicate this mix node, set the blend mode back to mix, take the ambient input and plug it in the factor value. And take the input of the previous mix node and plug it into the top slot. And for the bottom slot, plug the original color. Now, plug the color to the color socket of the principal node. And now you can see the line effects perfectly. I had used this material on every window glass of the shot. I had assigned all the materials to the objects, building materials to the buildings, glass material to glass windows, and the comic diffuse material to the props. Now it's time to lighten up the scene. For the world light, let's go to the world material setting, and add an environment texture. I am using this HDRI. Plug that to color. Add the mapping and texture coordinate nodes and give a bit of rotation. I am giving rotation so that I can see some shadows also. Let's lower the strength because the main light will be a physical blender light. For this I am adding a sunlight with higher strength value and lower angle value and trying to rotate it in the same direction where the HDRI sun has to be. One thing I want to show more before I rotate the sun you can see in the references that when the sunlight makes shadows you can see this reddish color spectrum, like that the RGB of the light is separated too. You can achieve this effect in Blender too. This is an effect I had used in many of my previous projects also. Let me show you how. You have to just duplicate the light and place it apart, and select the first light and go to the color and then RGB, and set all the other colors to zero except the red color, and select the second light and set only the red color to zero. And that's your effect. The thing is, all the RGB colors, make white color, and if we can offset the RGB, we get this anaglyph color effect. So now, let's make the world HDRI strength to zero. So that we can see our effect better. Duplicate this sun lamp, place it apart. And select the first light and go to the color and then RGB, and set all the other colors to zero except the red color, and select the second light and set only the red color to zero, so now just, Slight rotate the red color light a bit, and you get the effect. You can also soften these by, increase the angle values on both the lights. Now select both the lights and set this to individual origins, and now rotate the lights to match the light of the HDRI. Now this is okay, let's set the world light strength back to 0.5 and the light is done. Let's add some volumetrics in the shot. So add a cube and place it between the Spider-Man and the buildings, and scale it up a ton. Now we will add the material. Delete the principal material, and add a principal volume shader. Set the color to blue. And give a very low density. And do not forget to plug all your volume shaders to the volume socket of the material output. 
Now we need to add a little bit of emission to the shader, so give a very low amount of emission strength and set the color to blue as well. Now the volume is looking fine. This cube is very distracting in the viewport. So select the volume cube and go to its object properties, and go to viewport display, and set it to bounds, so that it will not be visible in the viewport. Let's be honest I don't like this background sky. I will add this image into the background of our scene. So, right click and add images as planes. And select that image to import as a mesh plane. And place it behind the buildings. Like this. Now let's improve its material. But first, I would like to show some references, as you can see in this images the further buildings are also making that anaglyph color effects. I want that in mind too. So let's edit its material. First as always, add both of his life partners. Add a color amp node here. Change the black color to gray. Let's add a third handle, and give a nice blue color to it. Now we will going to separate the RGB colors of this image. To achieve the effect, duplicate these nodes three times. And name them RG and B. Now add an RGB curve to the first group and lower the curve for both green and blue, except red. Same, add the curve to G, lower all the curves except the green, and same to the B, add the curve and lower all the curves except the blue. Now mix it with color mix node, by adding both colors to both the sockets. Link the mix node to the output and set the blend mode to add. Factor to full value. Duplicate mix node and plug the third group and mix it also with add. Now it is looking same like before. Except, now we can offset the position values for each group. You can see we are getting the effect. You can also offset the position value of other color groups as well. This is also done. The next thing I want to do is, duplicate the image plane and place it behind the camera or in the front of the subject to cast light and reflection of some buildings. I also added some cubes to act as other buildings and block some extra sunlight, to give a feel that this scene is places in a city. You can see the difference here. This is without extra cubes and image reflection, and this is with those cubes and image reflections. There's nothing much left for compositing. I will just add color correction, chromatic aberration, and little bit of glow. Let's start with chromatic aberration. So add a lens distortion node and adjust its settings. Give the distort in negative values, and add dispersion values. And now add the color balance node, for color correction. Now to give some glow, add an RGB curve node, and plug the link to the image socket, and plug the curve to the composite. Darken the curve, add a blur node give 50 to 50 values, add a mix color node, place it here, plug the blur link to the bottom socket, and plug the output of color balance node to the top socket and set blend mode to screen with very little amount of factor value. And lastly, add a filter node, set it to box sharpen, and lower its factor value. And that's the look for Spider-Man across the verse. Before ending this video, let me share you a cool shader pack for you guys, this is a cool tune shader pack for your models, very impressive. This shader pack supports both EV and Cycles render engine. It has 15 different shader styles. All are very cool and artistic for 2D look for your 3D models. And the best part is, they are fully procedural, you can change anything you like. And have even 4 different rim lights and 10 different outlines, which are not common in other shader packs. There's also a line rendering node for creating outlines, just inside the, the shader editor. You also get 17 flares and so much more with just $35. You guys should definitely check it out if you want to level up your NPR rendering, or to make your renders stand out, 
please use the link which is in the description to purchase it, and it is also directly contribute to this channel. So, I hope that you learned a lot with this tutorial, every pattern or texture I use are in the description of this video. Hit a like for this video and subscribe my channel for more, bye.